be able to operate accurately with integers. Addition rules should be fairly straightforward and simple common sense rules. Subtraction, we're going to switch our subtraction problems to addition problems. Multiplication and division, we'll talk about. Most of you are going to find your elementary, middle school teachers shortcut, same signs positive, opposite signs, opposite signs negative. Easier than me actually explaining to you what is going on when we multiply. But uh, you can use that. You can use that as long as you realize that it only works with multiplication and division. It does not work with addition and subtraction. So let's talk through addition first. Addition. Lose $7 and lose $9. Okay, I lose $7 and I lose nine more dollars. Should make sense to you that I'm losing a lot of money. I'm losing $16. All right, I lost some, I lost some more, I lost a lot. Okay, I said you could think money or you could think staircases. I'm going down seven floors and then I'm going down nine more floors. Altogether, I've gone down 16 floors. Okay. Think money, think staircases. Obviously, if I give you two positives, we're going up and up. No one struggles with those. Throw the negatives into the mix. Lose $9. I drop $9 onto the floor, but quickly snatch eight of them back up. All right, I lose $9, pick up $8. Somebody got away with my $1. Right? I lose, if I lose more than I gain, ultimately I have a loss of something. But it's not as big a loss because I gained some of it back. Okay? Common sense money is how I want you to deal with adding. Lose $3, find $10. Ultimately, that's like finding $7, positive 7. Okay, because of this three that I lost, I don't actually achieve the full 10. And again, if we think staircases, there's your starting point. If I go down three flights of stairs, oops, my bad, I'm going the wrong direction. Come back up 10 flights of stairs. We've got this crossover, right? This, this three zone, I went down three, came up, came up three and then actually only went up seven more. That's my answer, All right? From where I started, I'm only really up seven floors because I've doubled back here, okay? Staircases or money for your positives or negatives when you're adding. Subtraction, subtraction. Every subtraction problem can be changed to an addition problem as long as you realize this is, a, this is the real definition of subtraction. It's adding by the opposite. So if I have something like this, negative 4 minus negative 12, that means the same thing as negative 4 plus positive 12. Okay, to subtract is to add the opposite. Subtracting negative 12 is the same as adding positive 12. If you can translate your subtraction problems into addition problems, then again, you can use common sense, money, or staircases. Down four flights, up 12 flights. Ultimately, from where I started, I'm up eight. Or if I lose $4, but somehow get to grab $12 from the start of the day, I'm up $8, okay? Negative six minus 21. If I rewrite this as an addition problem, keep your first number, addition, opposite of that. Negative six plus the opposite of 21, right? Negative 27, okay? If your teacher in middle school, elementary school taught you this rule at all, they probably used some phrase like keep, change, change, or keep, switch, switch, or keep, switch, change, right? First number, 
stays the same. Switch your subtraction sign to an addition sign and change the sign of your second number. That will turn any subtraction problem into an addition problem and then you can use common sense money. All right, I lose some money, I lose some more money. I lost the most money. Multiplication and division. What is actually happening when you multiply by a positive value is this. If I say, if I start with, I went down two flights of steps and I did that four times. Okay, I'm expanding on what has already happened. I went down two flights of steps four times. One, two, three, four. Ultimately, negative two times four is negative eight. All right, I expanded what was already happening. Similarly, if I walk backwards five paces, or if I lose five dollars, let's say I lose five dollars and I do that 11 times. I lost five, I lost another five, I lost another five, I lost another five, I lost another five. I lost a lot of money. That's a loss for me. If I lose five dollars 11 times, ultimately I lost $55, okay? Multiply by a positive, expand what you already have. If I divide by a positive, I've got negative 16 divided by four. Okay, I went down 16 flights of stairs. Split that trip into four pieces. Each piece, I needed to be going down four flights of stairs. All right, I was going down, I'm dividing it into chunks. Each of those chunks is still down, downward motion. All right, so if you multiply or divide by a positive value, you're expanding what already exists or contracting what already exists. This first sign is retained. If we, on the other hand, multiply or divide by a negative value, flipping what already is in place, right? So, down to two flights of stairs times the opposite of five. So down two flights of stairs, the opposite of five times means what I'm actually doing is going up five times. Okay? This is why a negative times a negative gives you a positive because I'm doing the opposite of going down. Same kind of thing with division. If we say 16 divided by the opposite of two, it started with 16. Right, if I split this into two pieces, it would be eight and eight. But I'm going to split it into the opposite of two pieces. Split the opposite of two pieces, so I have negative eight. Okay, like I said, for multiplication and division, the, the language of what's actually happening can get confusing. So this rule that your elementary middle school teachers taught you will always work. Opposite signs, negative answer, same signs, positive answer. Right? That little shortcut rule will work. You can use it. Uh, the idea of multiplying or dividing by a negative and having it flip comes into play with lots of mathematics, not just uh, not just integer operations. So it's worth it's worth at least considering integer operations. 
best thing you can do to prepare for the interrupt integer operations quiz for me is take a sheet, random problems, either printed by me or you can make it up yourself, right? You just do negative two plus negative eight, negative six minus 13, four times negative one, 11 divided by, uh, let's now make that 11, 14 divided by two, uh, make that a negative. All right, anyway, random list, okay? Problems either given to you by me, given by somebody else, make them up yourself. Try to do them all without a calculator. Get your answers, all right? Maybe you thought this was 10, thought this was negative 19, thought this was negative four, thought this was negative seven, okay? Do the problems without a calculator. Check your answers with the calculator. Negative two plus negative eight is negative 10. That's a big deal. Don't just say, oh, oh, uh, I, I got that right. It's, it's, it's uh, I just missed my sign. No, circle that problem. All right, call attention to it. Why, why did I miss that sign? Make sure you understand the why. Why is this supposed to be negative? And if you don't understand, I don't understand why the calculators give me a different answer than what I thought it was, then come talk to me if you know me. I'll talk to your own math teacher if you don't. Okay? But you're checking each of these. The next one's cool. So I'm good with that. Okay? You are ready to quiz on this topic when you're not making mistakes at all with it, okay? You're ready to quiz when, you're, when you do your own practice on your own and check your answers, you're not making mistakes.